In this video, I will rank all the historical TV shows of 2022 that I have seen. I will use the same 5 tiers I used in my 2021 video. So, I watched quite a lot of historical TV series in 2022, both new ones and continuations. The first one was, back in January, the final part of the Ocean Czech miniseries Maria Theresia, which concluded Empress Maria Theresa's life and covered the last 20 years of her reign. Well, this series, I really liked its first season, then I really disliked the second season, and now this last part is somewhere in between. It had only one episode, two hours long, and to cover 20 years, it was not enough. The pacing was not the best, the plot had to run so fast because of the limited screen time, but I think it did what it could with what it had, with the elder Maria Theresa, the stories of her children and her late reign. I will put this in decent. Then I watched Snowdrop on Disney Plus actually. It is a South Korean series adapted from the handwritten notes of a man who escaped from a political prison camp in North Korea and it is set against the backdrop of the 1987 democracy movement in South Korea and it is set in a female university dormitory. I loved this series very much. Great characters, great plot, very good atmosphere. It could have been less than 16 episodes, but otherwise it is an amazing series. I am putting it in very good. The next one is the first season of Vikings Valhalla on Netflix, sequel to the Vikings series set more than 100 years after that. It is about the stories of Harald Hardrada, Leif Erikson and his sister Freydis, Knut the Great, Saint Olaf, etc. This series was a mixed bag for me, because I enjoyed some storylines very much, particularly those in England, but I didn't really care about some other storylines. There were some great characters, but there are main characters who I find quite boring. Mm, it is very good, slash decent, rather decent, I guess. Then, the next Viking-themed TV series, the final season of The Last Kingdom. It concluded the story of Uhtred de Babenberg, Etta Fred of Mercia, Edward the Elder and the others. This is one of my favorite historical series and I love this season too. I don't think that this was the best season of the whole show, but especially the last episodes were fantastic. So, I think it belongs to very good. Let's see what's next. Our Flag Means Death is an American historical comedy on HBO. Set in the early 18th century during the golden age of piracy, it follows the misadventures of gentleman turned pirate Steed Bonnet as he and his crew cross paths with famed pirate captain Blackbeard. Academy Award winner Taika Waititi was the producer and he also played Blackbeard. I think it was a good and funny show. It made fun of pirates and the golden age of piracy. As far as I know it was very successful and it was renewed for a second season. I am not saying that I am extremely looking forward to season 2, but season 1 was quite decent. Then, one of my favorites from this year, another K-drama, The King of Tears. This is such a good show, it is a real Korean Game of Thrones, extremely exciting from the beginning to the end. The series depicts the story of Yi Bang-won, the third king of Joseon, and it is about the end of the Goryeo dynasty, the transition period and the rise of the new Joseon dynasty. A real Game of Thrones, truly. Great, multi-layered characters, many perspectives, exciting power struggles and fights and battles and intrigues. Absolutely awesome. It goes into the highest tier, of course. Then we have Barbaroslar, a Turkish historical series about the Ottoman admiral Hayre de Barbarossa and his brothers. Now, the trailers just looked so awesome. I was so hyped up about this series. 
Also because I find Barbarossa and his brothers very interesting historical figures. And the show started off well, but then after about seven, eight episodes, it became quite slow, predictable and even boring to me. It was quite inaccurate historically, but that didn't even help the drama. I mean, the brothers' real lives would have been much more exciting than this TV show. I don't know. It is low decent? High could have been better? Okay, let's be generous and put it in decent. Another Turkish show, Arparslan, was running almost parallelly with Barbaroslar. It is about the life of the Seljuk Sultan Arparslan. It is a prequel to the very successful Great Seljuks, which I talked about in the ranking video from last year. I think Arparslan was not nearly as good as that. Story-wise, character-wise, it seemed almost a copy-paste, but the whole end result was not even close. Very slow, predictable and repetitive. The potential was there, a very high potential, but it was left unused. After watching some Turkish historical TV shows from the last few years, I have the feeling these new Turkish shows are all very, very similar to each other. They usually have high production values, but they operate with the same tropes, the same cliches, the same characters. It's all black and white. There are perfectly good heroes and there are cartoonish evil villains. I miss the multi-layered characters of former Turkish shows. I think Arparslan cannot go higher than could have been better. But the next one will be higher, finally. The First Lady is an American anthology series about three First Ladies of the United States. Eleanor Roosevelt, Betty Ford and Michelle Obama. I absolutely loved the Betty Ford parts of this series. Those were chef's kiss. Michelle Pfeiffer deserves every kind of award for this performance. The Eleanor Roosevelt parts were also quite good and interesting. Gillian Anderson did a good job too. I think the lowest points of the series were the Obamas. I don't know why, the writer just didn't do a good job with the storyline. All in all, I think this series deserves to be in the very good tier. Then I watched two Spanish language dramas. One of them was the Spanish miniseries Boundless on Prime Video about Magellan's circumnavigation of the world. The main roles are played by Rodrigo Santoro and Alvaro Morte. I think the series was not bad at all, but if I would recommend a drama about Magellan's journey, then it would be The Conquistadores Adventum, which focuses on the circumnavigation in two or three episodes, and that is just so much better than what Boundless did with it. Shame. But like I said, it was okay. So it goes into the decent category. And I also watched an Argentine miniseries, Santa Vita, which is about Eva Peron, portrayed by Natalia Oreiro. I watched this on Disney Plus as well. I would have never thought I would watch such great historical dramas on Disney Plus. I loved this series too. Well done, Argentina, for producing such high quality historical content. I am putting it in. Very good. Then in the summer I watched Becoming Elizabeth, which is about Queen Elizabeth's youth during the reign of her brother Edward. I made a review video about this show back in the day. Since then it was announced that there would be no season 2, which is such a shame. The series had its flaws, but I still wanted a second season. I think it belongs in the decent tier. I also managed to watch the Russian TV series Elizaveta, which is about the youth of Empress Elizabeth of Russia. It is a prequel to Yekaterina, one of my favorite historical TV series. I think Elizaveta is not yet on the level of Yekaterina, but I enjoyed this season very much. It is similar to Yekaterina, but it has a bit less series tone. It has a bit of the Three Musketeers vibe. It is a very good show, in my opinion. I also watched a few German shows in 2022. First, I watched The Empress, 
which is about Empress Elizabeth CC of Austria. The first season covers a short time of her life, her meeting with Emperor Franz Josef and the first few months of their marriage. Due to its success, Netflix has already renewed the show for a second season. I talked about this series a lot in my videos which compare it with the rival production CC. I don't quite understand the popularity of the Empress and I think it could have been better. Much better. Another German historical show I watched was the second season of Barbarians. This show is about the Roman Empire's occupation of Germania and the rebellion of the Germanic tribes. I loved the first season very much, but I think season 2 couldn't reach the level of season 1. I don't hate it as much as others do, I just don't like it as much as season 1. So this goes into the middle category. Then another star series, The Serpent Queen, which is about the life of Catherine de' Medici, Queen of France. This show has also been renewed for a second season, thanks to its great success. There were parts of this show that I really enjoyed, especially the first few episodes with the younger characters, and I think Samantha Morton did a great job as Catherine as well. And Breaking the Fourth Wall also worked for me. But there were parts, especially the dragged on Mary Queen of Scots storyline, that I didn't like. Also, the frame story seemed quite weird and unnecessary to me. I will put this in decent too, but if I could choose, I would rather have stars renew Becoming Elizabeth. The next one is a BBC drama, SAS Rogue Heroes. It depicts the creation of the Special Air Service, SAS, and their actions in North Africa in World War II. Now, this is a really awesome show. I enjoyed it very much. Great story, great characters, great cast. I would have gladly kept on watching this for many more episodes. It has been renewed for a second season already. This will go into the highest tier. Then we have we have season 5 of The Crown, a Netflix drama about the reign of Elizabeth II. Now, The Crown has been one of my favorite historical TV shows ever, and I don't find this season very bad, but I think it might be the weakest season so far. Some of the cast were incredibly good, but there were also some horribly miscast actors in this season. I hope season 6 will be better again. Well, I would say it is low very good, high decent, yeah, decent. Then I saw the second season of Romulus, which is an Italian TV series about the founding of the ancient city of Rome. Season 2 is mostly about the war with the Sabines. In last year's ranking video, I talked about how much I liked season 1 of this show and I can say I like season 2 equally. Therefore. I must put this into the same tier. Then, another German series, Sissi season 2. It is also about the Empress Elizabeth of Austria, and this season covers her 20s, I think. I absolutely hated season 1 of this show. I talked about that in last year's ranking video as well, so I didn't expect anything good from season 2 either, but I was quite positively surprised Actually, there were storylines which I enjoyed. Yeah, there were also storylines I disliked, like the absolutely nonsensical marriage storyline and the very offensive portrayal of Hungary, very annoying historical inaccuracies. But all in all, the show did improve a lot. Much better script, much prettier costumes, much higher production values. Well done for improving. I mean, it is much worse than any show in the decent tier, but at least they tried, and they improved. Then the second season of Rise of Empires Ottoman, and this season got the title Mehmed vs Vlad, because it is about the fights between Mehmed the Conqueror and Vlad the Impaler, you know, Dracula. I liked season 1 as well, and this season didn't disappoint either. It was a very enjoyable docudrama. It must go into the very good category. Okay, so this is it. 
a lot of historical TV series, much more actually than in last year's video. What do you think of these shows? Do you agree with the ranking? Let me know in the comments.